National Podcast Day is September 30th, but what is National Podcast Day? It's pretty simple and you can help spread the word. National Podcast Day is dedicated to promoting podcasting worldwide through public engagement. You may be asking, what can I do to get involved with National Podcast Day? It's easy. Head over to nationalpodcastday.com and check the suggestions. But ultimately, these options are endless. Remember, September 30th, nationalpodcastday.com. And let's start the conversation. National Podcast Day is September 30th. But what is National Podcast Day? It's pretty simple and you can help spread the word. National Podcast Day is dedicated to promoting podcasting worldwide through public engagement. You may be asking, what can I do to get involved with National Podcast Day? It's easy. Head over to nationalpodcastday.com and check the suggestions. But ultimately, these options are endless. Remember, September 30th, nationalpodcastday.com. And let's start the conversation. Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Hi guys, DJ Lunchbox here, aka uh, Will Rutherford. Uh, I've been on the show a few times. You might remember me from such episodes as uh, Awesome Cast Number, whatever it was. Uh, and this video that I'm recording for you now is on my brand new iPhone. I got the iPhone 6, not the big one, uh, because I have an iPad Mini and I didn't feel the need for to get a big one. Um, and let me tell you, this phone is great. I'm I'm a big fan. It's uh, uh, the the contours just fit right in my hand. It's not the the hard edges the same way that the five and the four was. Was I jumped from a five to the six, and um, I know that some of the advancements I would have gotten on the five S, but uh, I didn't because uh, I, I I didn't have the money. So um, I took advantage of uh, Verizon's trade-in program. I gave them my five. They gave me a six. End of story. And I walked out, and it's it's great. The thumb reader thing is super cool. And I know that's not uh, a new feature, but uh, it still excites me as a nerd. Um, the uh, camera is bonkers, uh, which you can't tell because this video is probably compressed by the time you get to see it. But uh, trust me, this camera is absolutely insane. Um, Big fan of the phone, big fan of iOS 8. I, I feel like uh, the phone is just the right size. I always felt that the 4 was too small, the 5 was okay. This is just right. I'm a fan. The display is gorgeous, and uh, uh, it's just great. I don't have a bad word to say against it. So, uh, Sorg, thanks for having me on Awesome Cast once again, and uh, enjoy the video. Oh, and check me out on Panel Riot, panelriot.com. Follow me at Panel Riot on Twitter. Thanks, guys. Bye. Hey guys, it's Mike Sorg here for the awesome cast, ready to get geeky here in the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. And uh, we got a we got a full studio actually this week on the couch. One, of course, returning as usual. Chilla is back with us. Yes, I am. And, and I have new toys. <laughs> yes, he I does. waited in line. And also with us, a first timer in the studio, Josh Lucas of the hard. What's he? Wait, wait, wait. Okay, the hardware store, Crowdosaurus. You got this new app. Uh, it, 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 everything. I believe you're a chemistry teacher too. Is that right? Uh, used to be a chemistry, <laughs> to be a teacher. chemistry teacher. Uh, he does everything. He except does wait everything. in line. Except wait in line for the iPhone. Apparently, Did but we'll talk that. about that as Mine's well. Red. <laughs> How you doing? Great. How are you doing, Mike? Awesome. Awesome. We'll get into all those things that he's doing in a moment. Um, and of course, uh, we have our great chat room going here at live.sorgatronmedia.com. And we are we've taken over. I talked about the Ustream or you I'm gonna keep doing that. The YouTube Live uh, that we tested out last <clears> week <throat> with flying colors. We we did in our event last night uh, down at the Thrill Mill actually with, with uh, women in bio. That went great. Uh, so we're uh, officially taking over there. Uh, the cool thing um, uh, about it, if you go to live.sorgatronmedia.com media.com anytime during the week i leave it up there you can watch the entire last week is eight and a half hours of what we recorded 
on Tuesdays. And you can really love the experience. You can time shift the experience now of actually watching the live, uh, the actually live uh, uh, show with us. You'll just be very, very lonely in the chat room, probably. <laughs> um, but of course, we do this every Tuesday night uh, there at live, live Um at about 6.30 p.m. Eastern time, about an hour, hour and a half-ish. Um, and of course, you can find everything at awesomecast.net. Um, you can uh, check us on Twitter, at awesomecast, on Facebook, um, as well as Google+. Plus. So we're, we're putting stories up and clips all week. We're back to the clips. So if you guys, uh, a lot of people have been finding us through there. I know the equal jot from like almost a year ago uh, is like our top hits <laughs> for some reason. Uh, so, and people still comment there's on it. There's another version of that coming out. There's another version. There's, another, there's a jot. There's was the equal. Is that the one with the sensor at the top? Yeah. yeah. So there, yeah, there's another version coming out of that. That's not dependent on a tablet or anything there to connect to. It'll record. It looks pretty cool. There you go. Which bums me out because I actually got the equal drop right after we did that episode. <laughs> after we did that episode. <laughs> I don't know if she's been using it. I don't think uh, so. <laughs> um, and, of course, you can subscribe to us. We're on iTunes, YouTube, Stitcher, and Spreaker in audio and video formats. However you want to consume us. That sounds weird. Um, and, and also, hey, big shout out to Diggy, John DeGore, that joined us last week. He was uh, 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 gearing up for the Pixels of Fury um, and... And apparently, apparently, he got the uh, awesome cast bump because, guys, he won. There he is holding up the uh, statue right there, the awesome trophy that we were showing off last week. So, uh, congrats to him. I know he said he was super, super nervous, and I think he got super, super drunk afterwards to uh, celebrate. <laughs> so, so good for him. Uh, you can go check out all that stuff. I believe it's AIGA Pittsburgh.org or, or Pittsburgh.AIGA.org, I believe, off the top of my head. Just search it. Just Pittsburgh AIGA in the Googles. You'll find it. Uh, so let's get into our awesome things of the week. Well, first, Josh, you got a lot. Of, you got a lot of awesome going on. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I try to keep my awesome at some like level right here. That's right. It's a little. I, I might be like here, and you're like up here so on the. Just awesome. so it blocks my view of like what's really going on. Exactly. In the world. Exactly. Uh, first, I guess for the uninitiated, let's, uh, let's talk about like what. What is it that you're actively uh, into right now? Well, first, let's talk about the hardware store, which is really just a hill, hill away over here in the South Hills. Yeah. So, um, well, we do a lot of things, mm-hmm. uh, probably too many things. Uh, sort of the flagship these days of uh, our our work is the hardware store. Uh, at its core, it's a, it's a co-working space, a shared office space community. Um, but it's becoming so much more as we kind of iterate through different uh, models of, of what it could be. Uh, and we know each other because the hardware store has a, has a media-centric focus. It's a co-working space uh, that seeks to attract and seduce young media producers into its fold so that we can uh, work to find those guys jobs and uh, have a strong uh, production community here in the city. So a lot of the guys are animators and graphic designers and uh, videographers. So about half of my my, my teams are, are are sort of that focus. Nice, nice. Now you're starting in, um, um, you know, this of course uh, up in Allentown. Um, I, you know, there hasn't been a lot going on there for a while, especially in this field if it seems no unless there's, unless there's other things hidden in there that i don't know about there are there. hidden gems in the hilltop but uh, the hilltop <laughs> you know is is you know the story of pittsburgh right it was it's a neglecting neighborhood it comes from these these great roots of of the solid blue collar middle class and you know when the mills closed in the 70s and 80s uh it went with the mills uh in that middle class never reestablished itself. So we uh, are not actually first in, I would say, a la familia, the, the upscale Italian restaurant is, is first in up there. But, you know, we like to think that we're uh, contributing and in, 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 in bringing a different character to the neighborhood, mm-hmm. but we're not interested in gentrifying it. We're, we're really interested in in seeing how our co-working community can, can help lift existing businesses that are up there and uh, provide some sort of asset delivery that's that's going to make a difference in, in sort of how they think about themselves and how they present themselves more broadly to to their customers uh, up on the hill. Mm-hmm. I'm really just jealous we don't have something like this in Beachview. Yeah, why don't you, Mike? Why <laughs> I you don't know. It? You have, I don't know. I've kind you of have a start maybe, right I here, I'm right? Kind of start. Mm-hmm. I can sell some desks. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just put a desk over there. Everybody can do their laundry, there. obviously, but. Um. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, that's awesome. That's awesome. And it's great to see that thing happen because it's definitely, you know, it feels like the innovation stops at Southside sometimes. Yeah. Because, um, I mean, we, we got great things like Alpha Lab down there. Sure, we do. And, and we got all kinds of uh, companies popping up down there, shells down there, I know. Um, yeah. And it's great to see that kind of spread even But further. that's the danger, right? Mm. Like, we don't want East Carson Street to become eight miles. So we have to make sure that mm-hmm. we are thoughtful about how we spread the smart people out across Pittsburgh and how we spread people that have, you know, disposable income and talent. We, we can't just put them all in one place. That's, that's a horrible <laughs> idea because when you do that, then what happens to all the other neighborhoods? Right, right. Spread it out a bit. Um, and, and I've left, like, even this neighborhood, I think, has been popping up in the past probably three years, especially, yeah. you know, seeing businesses pop up, um, eateries, <clears> you know, uh, you know, uh, the, you know, we have the coffee shop and everything, you know, and it's, 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 it's a little more lively than when I used to take the train just through here and just that weird neighborhood mm-hmm. I never wanted to get off at. You yeah, know? yeah. Um, which, you know, I feel like Allentown to the point was for a bit too and maybe still is, is getting there, oh, right? Yeah. Totally is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> But that's because the county hasn't turned the tea back on. As soon as the county turns the tea back on, then uh, you won't just fly through there like when you're going to the South Hills. Are yeah, they planning yeah. on turning the tea back on? Well, I mean, we like to say they are, but they're probably not uh, anytime <laughs> in the near future. So, you know, when Pat cut all the transit stuff a couple of years ago, right? Like that's that's that was one of the lines to go. So now mm-hmm. the only time the T runs through Allentown is when uh, the real line is shut down. It's like the emergency line. Now, and for those not initiated, the T is the the train line here in Pittsburgh. Um, so they kind of our subway system, but more, mostly it's, it's light like, rail. It's subway. Right? It's subway for like a mile. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, it's our light rail system that goes at least through the South Hills or some extent through the North. Yeah. It used to be everywhere, <laughs> and it's awesome. You know? Yeah. Oh, it's it's amazing. It's amazing. It's, I, it, and that's something I'm totally jealous about this area. You guys have a coffee shop. Dormont? No coffee shops. Not, not to my knowledge. You did we, for a we, minute. We did for a minute and it closed down. Well, well. And it, it closed at like 7 o'clock so at night. You have a and, great diner. Two great yeah, we diners. Yeah, we have a couple great diners. but mm-hmm. And a great dessert place now, right? Dessert place. Is so there some kind of like cupcake dessert? I don't no, know. No, no, no. They, they were by the, the movie theater. They closed up. Huh? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Closed. Oh, yeah. They did. They were awesome. That was the coffee shop. That was yeah. As well. they, they were like a. They were like both. Yeah. So. There you have it. Well, we don't have a coffee shop either, Mike. So. So. So, know. if anybody wants to open a coffee shop up in Allentown, hey, maybe Crazy Mocha will get up there. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> Please, Monkey Mocha up there. Um, Just hold my tongue on that one. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, awesome. Awesome. But yeah, one thing I, I we've been uh, uh, putting out some of your posts. I know. I know uh, you guys were into the we talked about a few weeks ago the 360 degree camera you guys are open to get up there yeah no i mean we, we have a couple teams up there one team already has one uh mm-hmm. they use it for like real estate shoots so mm-hmm. they're trying to uh corner the market on you know like the howard Hanna listings right so they want to go into like a property and go ahead take the pictures of the property in panorama and then there's all kinds of web apps that'll publish that now so that, that could, what they're doing is that also translate to like the indoor street view thing i, I know some businesses have been doing yeah yeah totally it okay. right like that's exactly it right so there's a real estate side of that market and there's also kind of like working for google you can yeah. actually like apply to be like a google contractor to go do that stuff um and i think mayoflux has applied for that and i know shoutside already has the camera Nice. Uh, and it's, it's pretty neat, right? Like it's, 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 it's going to be really cool when, when this, this beta one that we were talking about uh, a couple of weeks ago comes out that will allow you to live stream in 360. And, and nice. the ones that we have now are just kind of like static 360 cameras, but the next iteration of them, uh, we could put it right in the middle of the room, like right here. And anybody viewing on the web could auto, you know, essentially control who they want to look at. So it's kind of like the ultimate drop cam. Mm-hmm. Ultimate drop be. Game. That'd be great. And That'd we can't be. wait to get one. There could be like, what, 550 bucks or something like that when they launch? It's not bad for no. what you're getting. And like yeah. to be able to stream that live as, as a thing that you could do, especially for like an event live stream where you could take it, stick it in the middle of the room and essentially capture that whole event in, in 360 degrees. That's that's awesome. I can't wait to play with it. That's great. You can get you get one camera. You get the reactions and what's happening on stage. And on the embarrassing stuff. When when they when they live stream that, like, how does that work? Is there a plugin you have to use? Yes, yeah, so you, you have to direct it back to a website that's that's hosting it. Right? Okay. So um, I think that the one we're looking at actually directs you back to their own website where you'd have to have an account and and it would have that integration, whether it's a Chrome app or I'm not real sure. Okay. Cool. Probably something. Probably something, something. Hopefully not Flash. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. Hopefully they're a little more progressive than that. Uh, the other cool thing I've seen uh, you guys talking about lately was the the new uh, the mesh Wi-Fi. Yeah. So just had installed. Is this the, the cool thing of the week segment? Yeah, it, but we're, it we're is kind now. Of, we're kind of all over it. So. Yeah. <laughs> 
Meta mesh, pit mesh. That's that's definitely the cool thing of the week. So there is a startup in town. Uh, came out of Hack Pittsburgh, still in Hack Pittsburgh, uh, and they are building a mesh network, and that is really really super important. What is a uh, Hack Pittsburgh for those that don't know? So Hack Pittsburgh is in the basement of Startup Town, and it's a uh, it's a space where you can go and hack things and not like computer hacking, not necessarily software hacking, but like life hacking or hardware hacking and, and things like that. So it's a, a bunch of guys that, um, you know, have an association with, with startup town and, uh, go down there and, and do cool things with, 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 with what, with what is out there. That's a lot of, that is a lot of, right. Wait, there. is that, <laughs> I saw a picture of this, I think, on Twitter. Yes. So that's, that's one of the antennas, isn't it? Yes. That's the antenna uh, on the front of the hardware store now. And it is uh, phallic and profound. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but more importantly, is just this general idea of what a mesh network is. It's this really cool way of creating free wireless infrastructure. So everybody owns their own access point anyway. What if those access points could talk to each other and recognize each other and figure out a way to provide a path to uh, wireless internet from that communication between the access points? So anybody who buys an access point that's been flashed with the code that these guys are writing for the mesh network will auto-recognize any other mesh network in range and provide more geographic coverage of the free wireless internet. Very cool. So it's this organic, independently owned network that sits on top of, 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 of a city or a neighborhood and even potentially the entire country. If you could like, remember like hands across America and like, in like the eighties, right? Like it's hands across America, but for wireless internet. That's handy because uh, I, I know cell service is particularly bad at the top yeah. of the hill there for some reason. <laughs> no, well, we can probably figure out why. Oh, yeah, 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 of course. Um, but, uh, but so how does that work for like, if, if I'm there by, well, once, what's the range? First of all, like if you just have one up. So um, we're not 100% sure. So that's, they're pretty big antennas. Mm -hmm. um, and they want to have really good coverage up there because this is essentially their, their, um, their launch neighborhood and they want to make sure that it's awesome, like an awesome cast, but for Wi-Fi. Um, so we're doing them every two blocks, I believe those guys are putting them up and kind of staggered across streets, right? So one side of the street, other side of the street, one side of the street. Uh, this is all done through a URA grant. Uh, and so the URA gave those guys some money to build this pilot mesh network. And the city of Pittsburgh is super interested in it, right? And everybody's super interested in it because who wants to pay for wireless infrastructure? Like that would be a millions and millions of dollars to do wireless infrastructure across the city. Sure, you could contract some big company to come in and do this, but mm -hmm. this is a, an organic way to grow it. Like this is a way for everybody to get in on it. Um, what does this, this might be an outside the box question. Maybe you don't have an answer for this. Maybe it's more for them. Um, but does this, because we've heard about municipalities putting in like, broadband because like Verizon or Comcast isn't providing mm -hmm. in that area. Mm -hmm. um, is there any concern of this getting in the way of those? Because uh, Pennsylvania in particular, I know um, they have restrictions on that because Verizon or whatever made enough noise. You can get in those politics, but, sure. uh, uh, but, but is this, is this outside the box with that? Cause I guess you're not exactly provide, you're providing access. So but, there's a couple ways to look at this. Yeah, because uh, I mean, you, you're, and, you're like, and, we're, we're talking about like you have your files for your Comcast in the building and it's hooked up to that, right? If, if I get that right? Uh, maybe. It could I'm, go any way, I'm right? technical, I know. But. <laughs> uh, so, you know, the thing about mesh networks is that they're just a network. Yeah. And they don't necessarily even provide access to the internet unless somebody ports it to their internet port. Okay. So think about this from a city services perspective. A horrible catastrophe happens in the city of Pittsburgh. All the lights go out, but all these mesh network antennas are on battery backups. Mm. That's a, a independent network that has the lights on no matter what's going on with everything else in city infrastructure. So chat functionality, video conferencing, video, voice over internet protocol, right? Anything that you can run on a regular network or on, on the internet, you can now run on this independent battery, battery backed up uh, wireless infrastructure. Now, to get to the internet, somebody's got to donate bandwidth. And that bandwidth can come from any business class uh, internet connection, right? Okay. So, I mean, like, I, I can't do it from my house, but... but You could. I would think Comcast would be mad at you. That, that's, I'm sure there's a TOS problem in there. Just <laughs> probably like, like, Just like, like running... Like, I'm pretty sure I wasn't supposed to run that Shoutcast server out of my house 10 that, years that's ago. That's probably yeah. true. Yeah. And you're probably not sure it's a bit torn, <laughs> like, gigabytes of, like... 
you know, Game of Thrones. Exactly. And like 4K, exactly. Like original 4K Game of Thrones footage well, or anything and, like that. And how does that work from a from the respect of if someone donates bandwidth, what happens if then someone does torrent or is that blocked somehow? Yeah, so that's or? all flashed on there very, very intelligently. So okay. uh, somebody in the street can't take your bandwidth if you're doing a ha- high bandwidth application inside your home. Okay. So the guys have written bits of code that say, well, I'm going to donate 20% to the street. Okay. Uh, uh, and then if something is going on inside the hardware store that requires a lot of bandwidth, that's just going to get shut off for oh. some period of time. So like, like, like ideally say we had a business class here and I want to do mesh here and beach view well in yeah. my house. Uh, I could say, you know, Hey, Tuesday nights, we're just going to kill it, kill that extra bit. Yeah. So it's going to supposed to be smart enough to do it automatically. Yeah. So if it sees that you're pulling and streaming and doing all that I'm, kind of stuff, if I'm sitting here legally watching game of Thrones and I need the bandwidth, it'll, it'll, it'll uh, dither, compensate. Dither it down. <laughs> now, all of that said, um, we think this, this is a disruptive idea. Mm-hmm. And we think that eventually somebody's going to be very irritated by it, right? Because a lot of people have a lot of stake in telecommunications and have been building out what we consider legacy systems, right? Like mm-hmm. these old, big, archaic chunks of infrastructure. And the rate at which this technology is changing is going to essentially create obsolescence for all that stuff. And in that, there's, I'm sure, going to be legal battles as well. But being this early in, I think that we're going to have a couple of years of awesome growth and awesomeness associated with it. Well, and what, but I guess my, my question too was what keeps someone that's using the mesh network from torrenting or from doing something illegal? Well, not, nothing. nothing. What keeps okay. you from going to Starbucks and doing something illegal right. other than their terms of service and whatever sort of firewalls that they may or may not have in place, right? Yeah. Uh, so, you know, that's a real interesting sort of question for um, how law enforcement is going to even keep up, right? Like mm-hmm. if you have all this free wireless internet access and people doing horrible things, then how do you, how do you regulate that? Now everything's still recorded, right? Like IP addresses, right. uh, all that stuff still gets, still gets logged. So theoretically, like if you do something stupid on your phone on a mesh network, I'm, I'm pretty confident that the NSA or FBI could deduce whose phone it was. Right. Uh, that would just be a hunch. I don't have any real data to back that up. Uh, but no, it's 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 um it has the potential to reshape and position Pittsburgh as being a very progressive leader uh, in this in this sort of hardware side, right? So there's about there's you know there's very few of these in the world. All the big ones are in are in the cool hip liberal progressive Nordic countries uh, for some reason, <laughs> right? And what I think oh, one those Ham- Nordics Nords, and I think one, <laughs> and I think one in Hamburg also. And there's a few uh, popping up in in big metropolitan areas like Brooklyn and in Chicago and stuff like that. But little Allentown, the little neighborhood that could is going to uh, have the first one. And you know, from our perspective, giving information to uh, to people that are are, are economically distressed uh, is is a huge part of of of, of turning those situations around. Next thing you know, Google's going to put an office in up there. You watch. I hope so. <laughs> Just one, though, and only like a 10-man office because we don't want all that East End gentrification up there. Exactly. Um, awesome. Awesome. Um, I, I know you got one more thing uh, I, I think you wanted to talk about. You got a new application you guys are testing out, right? Yeah. we. Uh, our goal in the hardware store is to launch five new apps this year. Wow. And so we just pushed the first one out. Uh, lessons learned from some of the other startups that we've done. Uh, we're doing them in six-month evaluative runs. And if they're not getting customers, we're going to shut them off instead of grinding, 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 grinding. So this okay. one's called 5x5. Five five, and what it does is it affiliates and associates five unrelated Twitter accounts together. And what that allows to happen is um, those folks to post on each other's feeds. So you can imagine the value there is opening up networks for people that don't have access to networks. So what we do is we partner a restaurant, a nonprofit, a rock band, a podcast, and a doctor together, right? And they all have similar uh, numbers of followers, but their networks are broadly and hugely different. So wouldn't it be great if if AwesomeCast could post on you know Bar Marco's Twitter feed? Like if you could compose a tweet and then have Bar Marco retweet that tweet or actually post that tweet as if it was their own composition, supporting the cool things that you do. Hmm. So the app creates efficiencies and schedules and ways for five unaffiliated uh, Twitter accounts to essentially do that in a, in a way that's not a pain in the ass. 
Can I say ass on, on, on the podcast? Yeah, yeah. Like, that, what's, that, what's the worst word I can say on the uh, podcast? Up to the F word, I up, think. Up to yeah. or including the F word? Up, uh, up to and not up including. Up to, not, yeah. not, not including. Unless you're really, really passionate about something. <laughs> <laughs> this is really... <laughs> uh, so we think there's a big value there. Uh, you know, everybody does this anyway in their... In their there's all these uh, informal quid pro quos on Twitter, right? Like... Mm -hmm. You tweet me, I tweet you. You Google plus me, I Google plus you. So what if we could formalize those uh, conspiratorial relationships and do them efficiently? And like just kind of grow the audience. Yeah, grow your, give you to a new audience, right? Because mm -hmm. there's a whole bunch of doctors who have patients that have never heard of you. And so what if that doctor would tweet about you for five weeks? So it's called five by five because it's, it's a five week run with five partners that you know nothing about. Okay. That's pretty cool. We try to be really cool. It doesn't always work. But <laughs> our goal every morning is to be this awesome, where I can't see the future it's, and uh, uh, cool. That's that's kind of my that's my my creed around here is like oh as long as I'm doing something awesome and, and hopefully getting paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that even means anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's it's sketchy for me too. Um, <laughs> awesome, awesome. So uh, if anybody wants to check out. Uh, everything you're working at on uh, uh where, where can they find all that uh workhardpgh.com uh at workhardpgh and just generally workhardpgh all over the place twitters facebook's google's that sort of thing awesome like us on google plus because that helps our seo do a lot of that <laughs> plus one us plus one us <laughs> somebody asked me what a plus one was yesterday exactly it's like, oh, it's like a like it's the thing Google wants you to do so that you show up on the first page of the search Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And there's that whole, is Google Plus going away thing, which I don't know. I haven't heard that yet. Uh, apparently, if you sign up for Google, you're not required to do a Google Plus account. Really? Yeah, yeah, but I don't think that means it's going away. I just think they're making it optional. Which is really crappy for the rest of us that they made integrates. So. Yeah. So, I, uh, yeah. How are they going to unwind that puzzle, right? Yeah. Because yeah. everything from, like, Google locations... So like YouTube's all integrated into that. And I thought it was a great thing. You know, it yeah. was, a, uh, I mean, I, I, it's, that's why, you know, I sold a lot of clients. I was like, well, you got to make sure in Google plus, I know there's nobody talking there, but that's how you're represented everywhere. Yep. You know, I think that's how you get to Google. Just you plug into their system. We're fans of it. I mean, I've, yeah. uh, we've been using it for two years or two and a half years. I've enjoyed it. I mean, Hangout has been monumental, for which, sure. which, you know, we got help outs, which I'm hoping to get some tests in for that here in, in the near future. Uh, to YouTube Live, which you, if you go to YouTube Live to mm -hmm. do a stream, there's like, do you want basic or custom? And basic is just starting to hang out through your YouTube channel instead of through Google+. Plus. Interesting. So We live stream to YouTube when we do live streams. Yeah, and we're yeah we're getting into it now because uh, after Justin TV went down, mm -hmm. you needed something reliable. Yeah, well, and it's SEO, right? Like if you, you stream to YouTube and folks are commenting and liking and engaging, then that's establishing your brand in mm -hmm. google's hierarchy of things. yeah play their game and it's not a bad game. i like it it's not I'm a bad in. game yeah, only the eu is pissed so <laughs> anyways uh what do they know Nords. <laughs> uh you know what let me uh, chill i know you got one too but let's get a little bit iphoney and then we'll take the break and we'll get more iphoney um my awesome thing of the week have you played with he hey siri much chilla i have so one of the drawbacks to Hey Siri mm -hmm. is that it had the phone has to be plugged in. Yeah, well, I we were, have. We were kind of hoping this would go away when they got out of beta. We we were. I was hoping. Uh, yeah, I was hoping it would go away when it got out of beta. It hasn't. Um, I use it a lot, obviously at home, mm -hmm. especially when I'm home alone <clears throat> with the the new kid. Yeah. Um. It makes it so much easier for searching for something or texting someone or anything of that nature. So is this like OK Google? This is like yeah. OK Google. So basically, uh, actually, well, I did. I have this plugged in here and I can say, um, hey, Siri, set my alarm for 7 a.m. And it's going and, and actually updates the words a lot quicker than it used to be yeah. like, like, like Google does. So why does it have to be plugged in? They they want it on battery. I don't. I. They went off battery because it's always listening. Now the Moto X did this first, right? Um, I didn't realize. I didn't and they have a special. Them. They have a special processor for that. 
Yeah, they have a special processor that's so it's kind of like how they, yeah. they added the processor to the last iPhone, wh- where uh, like the steps and all the fitness stuff, like mm-hmm. it's always looking the for the, the motion processor. So it's not sapping your battery as much. So there's no button pushing. Like so for OK Google, you've got to go and say OK Google. No, for, for OK Google, it's like my phone is sitting there and I say OK Google and it's every you hear the yeah, OK. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. yeah. Um, but you have to have you have to have the Google Now launcher. You have to be on this screen, right? You have to be on that screen for that. You have to be on that screen, or unless you have a Moto X, or if you're on the launcher, or if you're on the Moto X was the big one that was that was wherever the phone is. Um, One of the tablets too, because I know I know uh, Frank Genoa. Happy post birthday, Frank! By the way, at Fuzz One on Twitter, Um, he he had a tablet. I think it was a Nexus. Maybe he had a launcher on it too. I I think I think it's if you have if you have the now launcher, yeah, you can do it without having to turn it on or anything. Or, or whatever. And I think I have to activate because I do have that on my Nexus Seven, but yeah. it doesn't really pop up. Uh, but still, it's that that idea that you know you have that hands free thing. Um, I found it's really nice. Again, at night, saying you know, hey, set my alarm for the next morning. Um, I get in the car, plug the thing into the dock, and I'm muscling, you know, I'm fussing <laughs> with my my seatbelt or whatever, and I say, hey, uh, hey Siri, open Stitcher. You know, and, and it does. And, and by the time I'm done with whatever I'm doing, it's loaded up and I can see what the latest podcast is from my drive. Hmm. You know, it, it's been really nice for that the last few days. Um, the fun test was because we both have iPhones that are plugged in on our nightstands. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so the first night after we all updated, I'm like, hey, Siri, da, 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 da. And both of them start responding. <laughs> nice. Well, that's what I was wondering. Like, do you trust it? Right. Like, so when I use like, OK, Google, like set my alarm or whatever. Right. Like I still look at the screen because I don't trust it. No, look at the screen for sure. When you do text, um, it's kind of like uh, if you've ever done with Bluetooth uh, with with, hey, with with the Siri. Oh, it's picking up all my words. <laughs> yeah. Isn't it funny, too? Yeah. Like it's a long, it, it's all, it it's yeah. just, like it my, never stops. It's like my whole screen right now. And it keeps going. <laughs> and it keeps it's going. waiting for you to stop. And it keeps going. It seems to hang on waiting to make sure you're finished. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's just filled. With <laughs> 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 all right. Let's see what that does. I'm not sure what you said, Sorgatron. Okay. Um, other side thing that happened. Um, just, we were just kind of having fun with it. And I'm lying there in bed. I'm like, Siri, Hey Siri, tell me a story. Try it. <laughs> I, I have heard she'll come back with different different comments. Uh, the one, oh, sorry, it's, go a, ahead. it's a pretty. It's a no. It's a long. It's an actual story. It's like oh. one day there was a personal assistant that applied for a job at Apple, and everybody <laughs> thought uh, she was great. Propaganda. And it's like, and it was like, but it was like, it was like both like sweet and creepy at the same time. Yeah. So it's uh, that, that was a new one, and I had I mentioned it on the uh, the morning podcast I've been doing. Um, and somebody tried it and like, I'm like, I'm like, was it creepy or was it nice? And he's like, yes. Um, <laughs> it, it basically, it, it basically, but no, I, I really, yeah, I think I kicked it on again. Um, but, uh, that's the one thing that's actually made me. So for the five and the five S I had a battery case, mm-hmm. the Mophie. Oh, then, and I, I thought, you know, I, I actually used it a while at first and then I just became more in the habit of like when I'm at work, I would, I I used to just throw my phone down on my desk. Then I got a nice dock where I could see the phone and it got me in the habit of always just plugging the phone in because it's two Mm. inches from a charger anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So why not just throw it on a dock or throw or throw it on a charge? I've been actually, so I stopped using that because I got in the habit of actually charging my phone on occasion. Um, (laughs) That's actually the Hey Siri has actually made me think about getting another charge case, because if you're in a situation where you want to use it and you're not around a charger, you could just turn the case on. It would confuse, <laughs> it would confuse the so, battery and think it was on charge. So that's the uh, the uh, Hey Siri workaround. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm wondering if in the next phone or somehow they're going to figure out away with the motion processor or that's something it, to, i bet your i bet your 6x is going to have the well we got a chip that does oh, that too on. or the or the motion processor does that now um yeah. just like they did in the moto x yeah um uh, another interesting thing that happened uh my <clears> wife <throat> has it plugged in uh playing pandora all day at work and she found out she's on calls and just like just happened to us and she'd mm-hmm. be like, hey, so-and-so, da 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 and look down, and there's everything transcribed as a <laughs> command to Siri. 
um, but uh, no, I think it's gonna. It's early days. You know, it's one of those those new features that works awesome. Like Siri has never worked this smoothly for me. Siri was mm-hmm. horrible. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it, and it's 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 as responsive now as like Google Now is. Because uh-huh. I've always been impressed with how Google Now is for that. It's still a little wonky on the glass, uh, but on the tablet or or now that you have like Google Now on your laptop, right? Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. Uh, it, it's it's. You know, sometimes I'm just lazy. I'll just open a new tab and be like, uh, okay, Google, what's blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's just like the height of laziness at that point, isn't it? Um, well, and that's the one thing I, I think it was interesting before. I don't know if it was back during WWDC or, or when it was, but they said, you know, they were they were going to do a lot with Siri. And I'm sure it's because they were feeling the pain from Google and Microsoft. They knew they were going to launch Cortana. I've heard recently they've bumped again. They've bumped up the R&D up in Boston, which is where the Siri group mm-hmm. is, as well as the partnership with IBM and Watson. A lot of... So they're in with Watson now. I've heard... Oh, that's right. They were doing the business stuff. Watson <laughs> just... They just announced that Watson was going to start releasing business applications yes. using the technology. So I'm, I'm interested to see where IBM helps them go with this because now you're going to have all this big business, big data being able to quickly search through massive amounts of information and return wow. the data. So that could be their answer to what Google now does. Yes. Cause Google, I mean, Google has like, doesn't, doesn't Google kind of do what Watson is where it's like, it's just I, it's its own, that information. Yeah. I, and Apple had to rely on sites like Wolfram alpha mm-hmm. and, and different places yeah, like Elkin. that. So, so they, they like, they had to basically turn on specific sources, right? Versus Google is like, well, we are the source. Right. We have everything. We are Google. Yes. Um, interesting. So it'll be it'll be interesting to see where they take this and how. And what I'm happy about is we have more than two companies pushing each other in this in this realm. Oh, we got three. So now, we, yeah, Microsoft, I mean, is doing a huge push with Cortana. In fact, I hear they're bringing it to the desktop. So it's going to be interesting to see how they push each other. To just keep upping the game and not just on the search level on the things that are local to the device sure, like open this application or set right. the alarm or do whatever things that don't always have to kind of phone home just for a transcription so i, I would say that one of the things that switched me over to the nexus because i it was iphone in it for years and years was was kind of the disappointment around siri when it launched and the hype i mean screen size had a huge amount to do with it but you know google is just so much better at recognizing my voice than serious. So have you guys seen like improvements in like the voice recognition? Cause I've seen a lot of yeah. improvements it, it in the recognition, horrible. especially in like in the, in the last year, Yeah, more than in the, from the four S to the five, the five to the five. But it's S. been progressive. It's not even like yeah. from one to the other. It's, it's they're they're upgrading Pushing. it on the other end. Yeah. You know, you, you like, I think we're like a few times they have like, there's another source. They'll answer a new mm-hmm. question you didn't know about. You know, yeah. um, it, so so that it, it's not like a, a release schedule like everything else iPhone. It's a constant development that's happening in the background because it's not actually on your phone. No, the, everything's yeah. calling out. So yeah. and that's the one thing I think they need to work on the transcription. Yeah, I think the transcription needs to come local. That's mm-hmm. a personal thing from a security perspective. There's a lot of people that don't want to transcribe emails and things of that nature because of the phone home. That's something Android did in, I think, 4.3. They brought the transcription right. local to the phone if you had enough space. If if the if the vendor, like Samsung or whomever was making the phone, wanted to include transcription local, that was an option. Uh, Apple's done it where you can actually bring the transcription local down to the Mac, mm-hmm. but you can't on the phone. I'm also wondering if that's why all of a sudden there's all these weird space issues on older on older phones i don't know if it was something going on with apple servers or what and the os is taking up a lot more space all of a sudden um are you talking about like the install yeah because that install was like it said i needed 5.7 gigabytes on my phone i have a 32 and i had trouble getting that yeah um <laughs> i can't imagine these poor people that maybe picked up like the 8 gigabyte model for free well and i think there was a problem there was some glitch with the install too because i heard some people on 8 gig devices <laughs> and their device came back saying they needed 17.6 gig free <laughs> well <laughs> so i'm thinking there was some glitches with the install on mm. on the other hand like because there's no 32 gig 
device anymore. Um, I want to say when I got the 64 gig device, um, the capacity is 56 gig. So, yeah. So wow. something, that- and so that that's like my usable space. Um, right out the box. Yeah. So they're using a lot more than the 1.2 gig mm-hmm. compressed. No so wonder. OS. No wonder they up the. The so does that like yeah. so just so i see this as the biggest difference between like the google products and, and the apple products is i feel like both of them oversell what the feature set's going to be before before a new product launch but like apple way oversells sort of what the deliverable is and we were just we were talking about that earlier right mm-hmm, like how mm-hmm. all these uh parts of uh, of os8 and, and the fitbit and all that stuff being integrated has is, is been delayed what was the big one that you said wasn't they, they pulled on they launch pulled day? on launch day was health kit it's the kit. They still have a health app. They and, still have the health kit it's app. It's taken my steps. The app, yeah, the, the app, all that stuff works. I think some of that reporting. <clears throat> like cross app. Cross app type. Sort of data crunching. Yeah. is mm. is they, they found, they were worried about, and they seem to be much more security first. They, were, <laughs> they found a glitch where it would be possible for, through health kit for health apps to share more data than they should or something sure. along those lines. Well, and that's going to be a huge problem for anybody in that space. Yeah. But do, yeah. You, do you agree? Like, do you feel like Apple uh, in the last three iPhones has been way overselling what they could deliver? I think, I think they could have been more clear on things like home kit because they announced their partnerships. Yeah. Yeah. But they really didn't talk. I, and I figured we would have saw a lot more about that at the launch. The, on the flip side, though, I feel like all these people that I talk to that have the, the they get the Samsung device because it can it follows your eyes when you read something well, and, it, and it does that. And it's, yeah, not only is yeah. it bloatware that like you you buy a 16 gig device and there's two gig free, and then I have these people complaining yeah. that they have no room for for apps. Right. But also, I feel like they buy the device because they think that technology is so cool. Yeah. And it either doesn't work. Doesn't work. <laughs> or it's completely like just or, conceptually right. dumb. And there's no way to really remove it. And I was talking to someone today that has the new, I think the Samsung Galaxy S5 and they have the fingerprint reader. Yeah. And he's like, I hated it and it never worked right. So I just shut it off. And I'm like, that is like the, my favorite thing. Yeah. And he's like, I, I just must have something wrong with my finger. <laughs> and I'm like, what? And he's like, well, look, and like they have to because they have that little bar for their home button. Mm -hmm. So you have to slide your finger like an old school, like 1980s (laughs) scanner. Like was that was on the HP or the compact iPack pocket PC. (laughs) And I'm like, I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm like, mine, it like makes you take it takes multiple scans of your fingerprint and if it grabs the same image twice, it kicks you back and makes you keep going more to make sure you move your finger around. And then just when you think you're done, it makes you scan the edges of your finger <laughs> to make sure like if you grab your phone like this, yeah, it unlocks correctly. Yeah. I'm like, why? So I feel like a lot of times like those, they have this gimmick that never works right on the Android side where yes, our stuff's delayed and over promised. I, so, I feel like it's so much less gimmicky. Yeah, I would totally agree with you. Like, I was super disappointed in the in the, in the Galaxy line. Like, yeah. I bailed on that real quick just for that reason. It, it was all bloatware. It was all slow. It was all just, you know, the, the basic things that you needed to do in it were, were being mired down by all this bells and whistles mm-hmm. that That's didn't. That's work. why I, I'm I'm Nexus or bust when it comes to it's Android. It's, it's it's like no, I want the Google thing. Like, I would do I, I would do a Motorola X only because it's so close. Yeah. To yeah. Nexus with a very I feel like what they did with some of the Motorola stuff was took things that Google had created as as a, a demo or like a framework and they said here's hey other other companies here's how you can implement this and here's how it should be done. Yeah. So I feel like those well and I don't know what it's going to be like now didn't someone it bagged say, silver like Nexus silver yeah. got bagged I think I read somewhere last week. Like it'll be interesting to see what what comes of that and what comes of motorola with their recent didn't they get acquired by lenovo yeah or, they got re, yeah. they got put back out in the wild right yeah. they got mm-hmm. acquired by google and then unacquired yeah <laughs> like, oh, like in a year and a half cycle <laughs> it's like but they had some really cool stuff in that year and a half google did i feel like motorola did so much with themselves i hope they keep that streak alive yeah with mm-hmm. with not putting a bunch of crap on their phones yeah yeah it, it's a 
I, when I look at the Android and I see the bloatware on that, like it's just like Windows PCs to me. You yeah. know, no, Samsung never put good, put good stuff on their Windows PCs. They're not going to put good stuff on their phones. You know, <laughs> it's silly stuff. I, too. It that, even that's, make that's, sense. that's I mean, Android by itself, not bad. You know, yeah. Um, but I I can't trust it for a phone to me. Hmm. You know, like that, 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 except for maybe a Nexus, right? Um, but. Um, hey, let's uh, uh, first. Uh, we got to mention our sponsor real quick. Then we'll get to the rest of our awesome things of the week. We actually have two more. Two more. We have a, 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 fan, a, a chat room one as well. Uh, I want to give a shout out to our friends at Slice on Broadway, uh, feeding our guests. So we have so many tonight. Malengo came in for the movie minute as well. Josh and Chilla in here uh, tonight as well. So uh, if you're in the South Hills of Pittsburgh, please check them out. They're right here on the tracks, like we were talking about along the T line. Mm. Um, a great, uh, uh, just coming for a slice. Great gourmet pizzas. We've had these uh, pizza pal gathers. We're we're way overdue for those. Chilla, yeah, getting our pizza pal going. Um, Dutters is back in the neighborhood. Oh, she over is. in Mount Washington. So we have to we'll have to get the crew together and get and invade their uh, their top floor again. <laughs> and Thursday and- nights are. We'll, we'll play it off here. We'll yeah. play it off here. Um, anyways, um, they're there. And I also got a new location down in Carnegie, down on Main Street um, in Carnegie, PA. Uh, if you're heading out uh, out to the airport, um, it's there's an exit right there. Okay, there's a little bit of construction going on, but it's right on Main Street. I'm on Broadway. I know it's confusing. Um, but uh, great, great place, great people, great pizza. And we thank them for supporting us and our stomachs here on podcast night uh, at Sorgatron Media. Uh, Hi guys, DJ Lunchbox here, a.k.a. Uh, Will Rutherford. Uh, I've been on the show a few times. You might remember me from such episodes as uh, Awesome Cast number whatever it was. Uh, and this video that I'm recording for you now is on my brand new iPhone. I got the iPhone 6, not the big one, uh, because I have an iPad mini and I didn't feel the need for to get a big one. Um, and let me tell you, this phone is great. I'm, I'm a big fan. It's... Uh, uh, the the contours just fit right in my hand. It's not the the hard edges the same way that the five and the four was. Was I jumped from a five to the six, and um, I know that some of the advancements I would have gotten on the five S, but uh, I didn't because uh, I, I I didn't have the money. So um, I took advantage of uh, Verizon's trade-in program. I gave them my five. They gave me a six. End of story. And I walked out, and it's it's great. The thumb reader thing is super cool. And I know that's not uh, a new feature, but uh, it still excites me as a nerd. Um, the uh, camera is bonkers, uh, which you can't tell because this video is probably compressed by the time you get to see it. But uh, trust me, this camera is absolutely insane. Um, Big fan of the phone, big fan of iOS 8. I, I feel like uh, the phone is just the right size. I always felt that the 4 was too small, the 5 was okay. This is just right. I'm a fan. The display is gorgeous, and uh, uh, it's just great. I don't have a bad word to say against it. So, uh, Sorg, thanks for having me on Awesome Cast once again, and uh, enjoy the video. Oh, and check me out on Panel Riot, panelriot.com. Follow me at Panel Riot on Twitter. Thanks, guys. Bye. Uh, Chilla, we didn't even get to your awesome thing yet. So the keyboards have landed. Yes, they have. Um, I'm actually downloading another one right now. Are you? Are you, my awesome are you becoming a, a, a keyboard fiend? I, I kind of am. Um, so there's there's now one that is all animated GIFs, <laughs> and it sends the GIFs as emoji through text messaging and what and and That's whatnot. Funny. So I, I'm. I, I'm interested to see how this works out. I know a lot of people are like from the Android side. Oh, we've had that forever. Um, I have used swipe. I've used different things on Android. Yeah. I, I feel like the major ones like the, the, the swipe and, and flexi and, and things like yeah, those yeah. Are, are fully baked. I feel like there's a lot that are half baked. I'm hoping that Apple's, Gestapo that monitors apps going into the app store locks this down and doesn't just let anything through just because it's using a new technology that they enabled. But everything that I've seen so far has proved that the they're doing it right and they're they're keeping an eye on it. So I'm I'm hoping they stick with that. So this um, is bringing like swipe to you guys. So yeah, wait. So I, I've had swipe um, since launch day. It took them a while, so I can go in. Do yeah. Oh, somewhere in here. Did I turn it off? Oh. oh. 
Oh, I reinstalled it. So okay. it's not on there yet. But um, so, yeah, like things like that, uh, I've been pretty impressed with. It's funny, though, too, because like some things just don't didn't come naturally to me at first. It's, like it's different. Think like stuff. swipe. I was thinking, yeah, oh, I could swipe. Well, I was thinking like I could swipe. Hello. How are you? And I would go. Hello. And then instead of lifting my finger, I was trying to swipe to the space bar. <laughs> and you can't do that. You have to lift your finger. So it, it does take some getting used yeah, yeah. to, but I'll, I can swipe now almost as fast as I can type, and I'm getting better I'm good there. I, I, all the time. I keep forgetting to turn it on sometimes. Uh, I'm actually using SwiftKey uh, because it was recommended on Android like a while ago. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, kind of the same thing, like kind of getting used to what is the flow of this. And, and it's like, okay, what is it recognizing? Am I getting basically the letters and it figures it out? Like, can I just kind of be loose with it like a signature, you know? Like, yeah. ah, I know the general vicinity of here how, here I am or something, right? Um, but again, like left and per word. And I feel like I'm like, like touch typing per word, you know, is, is my feeling with it so far. But again, kind of getting mm-hmm. used to it. It's interesting. I could do it. I could do it with my eyes closed now. Oh, we've been, well, we've had it well, for so long. Well, you've had it for so long. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that was a poke and stab at, at Apple. <laughs> Um, but, uh, no, I'm happy it's there. Like, so with that, I, cause I, I had SwiftKey on the tablet, um, and I've had the tablet for about a year and I just couldn't get into it. You know, it was so different. I figure I'm going back to forth, back and forth. The, the greatest upgrade to me, to this OS is the fact that I have more commonality across my, this to non iOS devices, because I do have that keyboard thing going mm-hmm. on all the apps. I can do the sharing thing. You know, it, it's, it's like. Sometimes when I wanted to, like, say, pick up Feedly and go through a bunch of news and, and tweet it out to AwesomeCast and insert coin and the other places, right, um, which is how I find my stuff for, you know, items for the show, I, I would, well, I should grab the tablet because I have more capability there. Now I feel like I can, uh, as soon as Feedly updates, um, I'm going to be able to pick up the phone and do it just as handily as I do over there. Um I was listening to, I think it was Mac Power Users, and they were talking about like what this is going to do for kind of power user workflows on um, iPads and, and, and stuff like that. Um, so, uh, What was I going to ask? Oh, are you, you use Pocket. Yes, I do. Have you used the Pocket um, extensions in the browsers? Uh, I went to use it today, but apparently I'm not logged in. Oh. So I have to set that up. So that's like my new favorite thing with the Pinterest and the, mm-hmm. and the pocket and things like that. I might actually use Pinterest a lot more. Yeah, that's that's where I think it's good. It's going to win out for me. And I've never actually really played around. I've done a lot of like the open in type stuff in Android mm-hmm. and, and the share to an app. Mm-hmm. But I f- feel like at least in the older version of Android, you kind of had to hop over to that app and mm-hmm. then it hopped you back real quick. Mm-hmm. This you don't have that hop it's it's the app is uh, a portion of the app appears on top of the app you're in this is how pocket works which is why i really like Mm -hmm. it so if you add pocket into the browser and you add to pocket you get this little overlay that's that's it says saved and it sits there for a second and you can add tags Mm -hmm. But you never have to leave <clears throat> what you're doing. I feel like it's the it's a good compromise to a split screen on a Samsung device, yeah, yeah. and and being able to, to to keep what you're doing and it just sure. sitting right there, and it just comes up with its own little implementation okay. on top, His, which oh. has been pretty impressive. That was weird. Popped up Pinterest for a moment and then just went away. Wow, maybe I'm not logged in there either. Um, I noticed. Um, um, uh, Hootsuite. I, I thought it was a great thing because now I have Hootsuite and I can access all the social networks I'm tied into there, not just the couple I decide to on Twitter and Facebook yeah. and whatnot. <clears throat> um, um, it doesn't work. Like I set it up, it sends, it never goes. <laughs> so I don't know if it's just because the app just added functionality, it's not working, is there something I need to turn on Hootsuite? But it pops up a thing and it, and then it pops up a, you know, I can hit a thing and say, what networks do I want to send it to? It, my list comes up for Facebook and Twitter. I select them, I hit send nothing happened so i don't know where the where the break is yet hmm. for instance so hootsuite fix that <laughs> Jeez, get on that right now come on what do i pay you for but um awesome we do have oh highest recommended keyboards so far for anybody want to kind of dabble so i like keyboards? i like swipe i've played with flexi mm-hmm. it's okay um and what was the one you were using swift key swift key i haven't used that one yet 
One password is free too right now. Really? I'm waiting for LastPass to pop in there. Yeah. That's you know that's kind of the coming soon, and this is this is based on app app makers themselves. But the um um soon as soon as they get to it, um I'll be able to you know log into my banking app with my fingerprint. Like I think mm-hmm. that's going to be killer. You know because I hate remembering that stupid password. Hmm. Um, and Do you remember the MythBusters where they faked fingerprints <laughs> with like a latex glove and some? Baby Listen, if anyone's going to go through all that effort to try to get my bank, <laughs> yeah, account, they're going to steal my phone. One, they're, they're going to be very disappointed. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's be honest. They're going to be very disappointed. If I had money that was worth stealing, I'd have, I'd have a lot more security. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, yeah, no, that's you know, although it is you know that point, you let yourself let auto login happen a bit more because mm-hmm. you're behind that touch ID like wall right off the bat. Yeah. You know? So. Like <clears throat> that lets you kind of be free with the rest of the phone, you know. Um, I'm kind of hoping I'm on LastPass, so I'm waiting for them to do integration because mm-hmm. um, they uh, the last update to uh, LastPass on the Android had like form fill across every app, you know. It asks you like every time I go to a login now um, if you want it, it pops up right in the middle. So I'm wondering if that kind of access is going to happen here, or at least like maybe you know the Touch ID, <clears throat> you know, mm-hmm. bits of it. So. Um, hmm. Yeah, uh, we do have one more awesome thing. This one is actually from the chat room, uh, dropped in by Alex Cars, alexcarsdesign.com. If you want to check him out, uh, his is actually Mighty Text. Yeah, I'll pull up. This looks really cool. Okay. If I had Android, this is what he says. Awesome thing for me, uh, Mighty Text for Android lets me keep track of my SF- SMS messages on my MacBook. They have a Chrome extension. I really wish I'd found this before I went up to camp for the summer. Um, and it's over at mightytext.net. You can get the app over there. Um, and, uh, it's cool. So it's like the, the, you know, what we, you know, well, I like that the, like the, it, it's almost like a console into your phone with new message, classic view, photos and mm-hmm. videos, favorites, contacts. Mm-hmm. And then I, I really like that it shows you the percentage battery life left <laughs> on the phone. So if you have your phone, again, sitting across the room or sitting wherever, and you're using a lot of the feature functionality from your phone, you can. it's kind of like a portal mm-hmm. right on your other device. It's nice. Over 4 million users. So a little bit more than, like, like I could say, well, isn't, isn't Hangouts gonna, was starting to let you do text messages through there? Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you have an Android phone. And, and now... Um, iMessages is now like I, my calls pop up. I, I have Leopard on my computer, <clears throat> so I'm getting all those uh, convergence. What are they calling it? Cohesion. I get all that can- cohesion stuff happening. No, it's not cohesion. Cohesion? No. What are they calling it? I can't remember. Anyways, that thing happens where the icon pops up and mm-hmm. everything syncs. Yeah. Um, I, you know, first it's like I had iMessage on over here, and I looked down at my phone, and that little iMessage icon popped up in the corner. Um, also, I had the first um, location-based app recommendation. On the lower left-hand corner? Yes. I was sitting in a Starbucks up on McKnight Road, and I'm like, oh, the Starbucks app's going to come up, right? And I looked down, and, and it was the AT&T app. There's an AT&T mm-hmm. store across the street that was popping up. Oh, that would drive me crazy. And then you cl- and then and it, it, it shows up in the corner, just like your camera's in the corner over uh-huh. here. So you slide from that side, and it loads up into your app. One, it didn't load up. It took forever. It aired the first time. Yeah. Um, it finally got into it. And it's like, how about you check your upgrades if you're eligible for anything? And, of course, it says everything's eligible on the next plan, which I'm not going to freaking do. Stop making me do that. Yeah. You know? uh, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait, guys. So this is a new revenue stream for Apple? They're going to put location-based ads in the bottom left corner of your... I don't think it's it's ads. I think it's... I it's, don't think it's, it's the So it's the app for the things in the location you're in. So yes. if you go into Home Depot, I, I so if you go into Home Depot, it puts the Home Depot app. Yeah, but Home at, Depot at a, pays Apple for that. Like they're not going to put the Sorgatron awesome cast app. I, in no, I, it's, no, it's based just a, it's on just GPS. An app. It's a GPS and an, and, and there's a, a way to turn it. There's the way there's a way to set it where it'll only show up for the apps you have installed too. So like I have the oh, Home so Depot will, app. So it will show up if I don't have a Home Depot app. It, I think it might, yeah, and it'll prompt you. You want to install the app, okay? You can turn that piece off and say just somewhere in the ahead. settings, just show me the the, the apps for the thing, the sure. things that are that are in my vicinity. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. interesting. 
see, I look at everything from a marketer's perspective, I think, at this point. <laughs> and so I, I, I just, a bit of, you know, cynicism there around why Apple and Google do the things they do, oh, right? Uh, of course. Well, it, well, mm-hmm. it, it's pretty much a, everything's too, so so it lubricates the rails of our money getting into something else. That's why we're doing Apple Pay. They already have our credit card, and we can yeah. use it a bunch of other places now, yeah, right? Yeah, for sure. Um, continuity. Continuity. Thank you. Thank you. Um, but, uh, I mean, you kind of, you know, you're along that line. You yeah. Know? So, I mean, when you see an at and app for the 15th time, <laughs> we, we still feel the same but it's way? so it's so um small yeah you know like you you almost have to be looking for it yeah you know because it, it, it's just like like i barely noticed it the first time i'm like wait something's different in the corner and of course if you have a busy yeah. screen <laughs> like, you're not gonna like? notice it at all <laughs> um but uh no i think it's fine and i think it's one of those things that could be handy like walking to starbucks and I'm like oh open your starbucks app i was like well that's handy because i uh have you know a gift card like a gift card or something yeah exactly or i load the app or something like that um so this goes oh, to the, sit, sit in starbucks and watch how many people pay with their phone you know i it did is ridiculous i did I, um well, that I, is one company i'm really impressed with them mm-hmm. really backing that technology and, and, and the reason i had the app originally was because i think somebody or i got a gift card from i don't know cloud or something mm-hmm. um and so you had to load it you i think you had to load it into the app and so it, it got you in the app it's been sitting there for like a year um and finally i'm like you know what i'm bouncing around town i have to you know starbucks is usually the thing that's around depending on where i'm at especially the area you have to go for so many shoots so i'm like i you know what i might as well do it it makes business expenses easier to have one item that i have mm-hmm. to plug in instead <clears> of every time i buy a three dollar coffee or whatever um so you know why not? So I'm so I'm now I'm one of the cool people that uses the the thing. Um, <laughs> well, and they they made it where their app just shows a barcode, and that's how they read off your account information, which is yeah, which is a pretty cool use of technology sure. for making sure that all the phones could do it, right? Why isn't it in pass my passport? Is my question. Shouldn't it be like? Isn't that what is, I, I've used? I've used Mac. I, and see, that's the one thing that I have Eventbrite failed at does it. is actually playing around with passport. But it, well, it's also like, do you use an app that that gets into it? Like I hadn't used it for the longest time, and then out of nowhere, um, I got a coupon from Chipotle, and we bought tickets to uh, the tech cocktail event that used Eventbrite, and both of them ported in. Like for so, first time in forever, I had like multiple things on my passbook. I yeah. barely even opened it. Right? right. So Starbucks should leverage passbook. They should. Maybe. Should. I, maybe. Have I, I don't know if in the set, if in the app, you have to in the settings, you have to say make sure it shows up. Like I feel passport. like I, I think there's these certain subsets of like there's some of us that like I don't even know I have passbook on the on my phone, um, and then there's some people that like airline tickets, sure. Starbucks, sure. go to the certain things that that use this all the time. Yeah, I have an Eventbrite, I have a Show Clicks, uh, I should probably buy one get one, which I've used all, already. And actually, my tickets to the Mick Foley uh, comedy show down at. Uh, uh, from Laugh Stuff is on here too. Which... And the, the reason I didn't get too much into Passbook is because there was like three apps that used it when it came out. Yeah, but now there's there's a decent much. amount. I mean, not that I go to Sephora that often, but I mean, office <laughs> or Air Canada or Air, Air Canada, <laughs> but like Walgreens, Dunkin' Donuts, American Ooh, Eagle, Dunkin Donuts, Ticketmaster, Live Nation. Um, I don't have a Discover card. Target. So now now I'm actually going through. I'm like, hmm, what can I do with all these apps? So. I started installing them. And plus, they're they're smart. They 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 gamified your levels in Starbucks. So. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Any other time, but I when I'm around, I go to the community coffee shop at the top of the hill. I As support them. It's just when I'm anywhere else, or if I find a local one, I'll go to that. But unfortunately, Starbucks is freaking everywhere. <laughs> it is. It is everywhere. Um. But awesome. Hey, you know, uh, speaking of marketing ios stuff um i noticed something i think i noticed this last night there are bundles on uh ios now if you go into the store mm-hmm. and you, you, you can you get discounts on like if you can if you need to complete a bundle yeah like you don't have to start back over or or whatever or you're not eligible for a bundle if you already had so like three of the five if you have three of the five like you get whatever the discount would be divided like Oh. Divide that. Divide the discounted price up by the five apps. Although it didn't work out, I, I, out. They had a uh, Infinity Blade, and there's three Infinity Blades. Yeah. they're like six bucks a piece, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and it was telling me that, like, oh, I I could complete my bundle of one of them for twelve dollars. I'm like, <laughs> I don't. 
don't think your math is right, animated. Apple. But here's what it looks like. It's actually it's a, it's kind of towards the bottom of the first page here. Um, and you go through like there's an Angry Birds one. Ooh, Prince, Prin- Disney princesses. Uh, Ubisoft classic hits. A lot of Rayman in there. Um, so I mean I, that's cool. I think that it adds to the kind of game community that that's going on there. Um, and, and I think it's mostly games, right? Yeah, they're taking a page from there's Steam, the, right? There's games. There's a lot of uh, photo apps in that. Is there, is there is productivity as well? There's productivity. There's there's a lot of stuff in that. Yeah, there is like an ultimate productivity one here that includes like PDF Expert, Printer Pro, Scanner Pro, uh, Calendar 5. Um, but, but I mean, they're definitely like all the same producer at least. Yeah, that, and that's what it usually is. is it's the same... If, if a company like best of juicy bits for iPhone and it's halftone to layout 3d camera and halftone family stargazing for 499 Scott star walk to star walk kids and sky live. Nice. Um, but uh, that's, that's a, a cool new, uh, kind of app discovery. Um, they also did do a lot of, um, um, at least first day, they were like, "Hey, check out, we got keyboards," and there was like a whole list of keyboards. Yeah, I'm like, all right, Swift. They, they had one that was uh, look at all the new games using Metal. Yes, and I downloaded that, a bunch yeah. of random ones. A lot of them are free games, uh, so I'm sure they're going to bug me to pay for something. They have the Zen Rock Garden uh, one. Side was... note: I'll talk about this on Insert Coin, or I'm sorry, Bass, Boss Battle later. But I did buy Goat Simulator. That's five bucks on. <laughs> Um, for the iPhone, for the iPhone, yeah. What yeah, a guilt simulator? Goat. Goat simulator? Oh, Goat Simulator. Yes. Yes. I recommend. I've only looked over someone's shoulder as they played Goat Simulator. We I'm heard not... a story about somebody's first experience, like his first two hours playing Goat Simulator. Like first, I did this, and then I had a rocket pack, and then this happened. And I'm like, that is the most amazing experience very I've ever. Compelling. Heard. It's very compelling, and then you go in, and it's just like, like I like I'm playing through, and I'm like, okay, I was like, whoa, 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 how do I have a rocket pack? And <laughs> And it doesn't work, Duh. right? But it doesn't work in a fun way. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> poor goat. it's 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 pretty tremendous. Poor okay. imaginary goat. Poor imaginary goat. <laughs> Magic uh 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 imaginary uh poor ragdoll physics goat. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Uh Sheila, you got a couple stories in here. I want to make sure we get to a couple of yours here. Which one do you want to do? Pick uh, one. What's Adobe doing? So Adobe bought Aviary, which I don't under I don't hundred percent understand why. Like they want to get more into the mobile photo editing. I'm like they have so a lot Aviary, of mobile photo editing apps. So Aviary is just a, a iPhone editing app, right? Yeah. Like 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 I, I I'm not a hundred percent understanding the value add. The value add. Like did they have more users that were willing to use the app than people on creative. Like I'm not understanding. I'm not. Uh, yeah. Maybe I'm not, it's a I'm team not play. What the big, but if it was a team play, why aren't you, why wouldn't you just create a partnership? Why do you it, need to buy them? I bet it's uh, going to be something in Adobe cloud to let people with Adobe cloud to, to muck around the in app. Aviary, something, yeah, I don't muck know. around with mobile app, something. Well, how how well is mobile Photoshop doing? That, you know, well, maybe that's that's it. Yeah, that's what like, I don't we're know. We're not getting any ground. We're buying the users on this thing. You know, yeah. you're looking at the new uh, Photoshop uh, uh, mobile. You know, in a little bit, maybe. I don't even think. I maybe the I, they people like the UI better. And, and the thing about mobile Photoshop is, is, when you think about a Photoshop experience, mm-hmm. yeah, you're, you're thinking layers and, and crazy selection tools. That's what they con that, and they did a good job. Don't get me wrong. The yeah. Mobile Photoshop does a good job if you need to do something crazy like, and on quick the on the yeah. iPad. Yeah. Maybe not necessarily on the on the phone. Yeah, I don't think it's practical on the phone. But at all. why wouldn't they just create some spinoff that was? Well, I think it's a branding issue, right? Because Photoshop has a barrier to entry for most people. Yeah. So yeah. you want to buy something that. An end consumer can consume, not yeah. So I think by. people are scared mm-hmm. by the Photoshop name at that yeah. point. I was like, "That's a seven hundred dollar application." Right, I and I had buy. a bad experience with yeah. it when I tried to crop a picture once. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Versus my my Photo Express that came with my computer. You know, like that's why right. people you know yeah. maybe gravitate more so, towards these. I would agree with you, but it's for users. It's for users and and just kind of put forward a face for new customers that's not intimidating. Two. Two of the stories that I, I found very interesting, and, and unfortunately one of them is in a limited area. AT&T 
Times cord cutters with a $40 a month broadband that hmm. includes HBO and Amazon Prime. What? That's not that good of a deal, though, is it? Right? Amazon Prime is, what, 9 bucks a month, 12 bucks a month, something like and that? And HBO is 10 bucks a month, but that includes your broadband. Oh, uh, okay. So okay. it's real broadband, right? Because sometimes they say broadband. Yeah, what, what broadband are you getting for 40 bucks a month? Because yeah. I'm paying... Five uh, down, uh, two uh, up. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm doing, I think I'm up to 50-50 because I did that diabolical rewards program that uh that chilla talked me into on fios <laughs> <laughs> but the, but the but, uh, inter- but the inter- you're 50 up i think it's 50 up and 50 wow, down yeah that's good for, yeah for, they, for, they went symmetrical because it was like it was like uh 50 25 and you sign up for their rewards points program which bs by the way i don't even want i'll tell you about that off the air it's not even it's not like you get free you like oh i got a car for 10 bucks at such and such like pnc gives me it's like it's you get a coupon for the car wash yeah it's, it's, it's not very good but like, they, but they match the your they match the same, your broadband they i have the same coupons speeds. off the town planner calendar up in the kitchen <laughs> what's the i'm the not South gonna go Soldier through Porter. it's like freaking coke points it's it's ridiculous just look at it this way you got a free speed boost and you didn't have to do anything. That's true. I don't. True. I don't pay attention to more the reward, actual and, rewards. And definitely more emails. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, the rewards aren't worth anything. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're, they they got the worst deals for those. Like, it, but anyways, back to this. So do we um, know the up up and down speed of that? It didn't. It didn't. Say. Wait, wait. So it's like full on. It's not like just the Amazon Prime Video. It's actually like shipping with Amazon Prime. Yeah. What? <laughs> like That's they awesome. bundled this entire. Now it's for the first year. Oh, until yeah. until you're. But it's it's a contract. I mean, you could renew in a year if they still have the deal yeah, going. They don't give you deals when you want to renew a contract. We are cord cutters. I will never. I will fight tooth and nail not to go back. Yeah, yeah. Well, they just uh, with Verizon's uh, modeling out. They're betting pay for the channel you want service now. Did you see that? No. What's yeah, this? Just I, I saw. I said they were, they wanted to try it. I didn't. I haven't. Seen so apparently, they've more. got contracts in place with you know all the all the production houses to do pay for the channel you want, pay for the content you want. You know what, man? If uh, if it was something to just buy USA so I can watch uh, <laughs> Monday Night Raw, I'm yeah. it. That's all I need. Yeah, everybody would be in, all right? I need. I'm okay. That's my last ditch thing <laughs> is to watch Monday Night Raw live on Monday night without jumping through some kind of Russian area. streaming site. Uh, oh, the British! You know, <laughs> British commercials are really fantastic. I, I gotta tell you. Um, but but no, but I don't want to do that. But you know, I you know. Th- Dancing in the gray area, I do pay for Hulu. I can watch it on Hulu. A day later. I just want to watch live. Um, so I just, in my mind. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, once you get rid of sports, like, what's the reason to have, I mean, for, for you know, once. Oh, you, for sure. Like, for once sure. you get rid of need for live. Yeah. That's the point of it. Yeah. We watch Doctor Who on a week delay and it's, it's fine. We just don't read the spoilers. Except for those few times when they're like, oh, they're going to simulcast around the world. Yeah. <laughs> I, just, I just go over to my friend's house. Yeah. I just right. like, find a bar. Just, find a nerd hey, bar. Hey, can I come over and watch you? Do you have Doctor Who bars? <laughs> they had, they, there sure there they used do. to be a Buffy bar down in, really? down in the south side. Are you serious? Yeah. Oh, that would have changed my life. My <laughs> Not in a good way, but in but a they way. But they would show Buffy the Vampire Slayer Which when, bar it, was when that? I was on. Do you remember? Oh, it's... It was like Bar 11 or something? It would be something quirky. Mm. No, it was across the street from Bar 11. It's now a completely different bar with a completely different huh. group that hangs we out have, there, We but. have some hacks in the chat room, guys. I have to share this. Uh, Doug, who, who regularly watches this show live on his Chromecast on the big TV, um, he says it looks fantastic tonight, by the way, hmm. uh, on the new YouTube stream. Uh, here's the trick to Starbucks app. You can go to Starbucks uh, Giant Eagle and recharge your card there, and they'll give you fuel perks. Then buy a coffee, and you can scan your Advantage card and make a purchase. It's Fuel perks craziness. <laughs> the, and then the real trick to that is then, so, how did I do this? You take your PNC points visa and <laughs> buy your Starbucks card. No, wait a minute. I have the I have the Advantage card Citizens Bank debit that I never use, so I should throw that in the mix too. Yeah. So, so here's, here's what I did to buy a TV once at Costco. So. <laughs> So <laughs> I have an American Express that I get. I think it's like an extra two percent back at Costco with, and I'm an executive member, so I get one percent back from Costco. So then I took my my American Express and I went and bought American Express gift cards with my American Express at Giant Eagle to get fuel perks. So I got 
3% back on purchasing them, then got the money on the, in fuel perks, this and then the, went to Costco and bought my TV, which then I got an additional 1% back. I mean, like, I ended up, not that I made money, but it, <laughs> but it definitely reduced the cost of the TV overall. And it was like a $1,200 TV that was $2,500 on sale for 12, it was 50% off. It was right. And then on the top of the fifty percent, you still got. I, yeah, I still got a good like four percent back and like plenty of plenty of tanks of gas. <laughs> so it was definitely worth it. This is the this is the new generation <laughs> of extreme couponing. Yes, that, that's yes, definitely that's my gut on it. Yeah, yeah. Well, and that's what I've done too. Is is like with the PNC points visa, I've actually like taken oh, the all point. my normal all my normal bills, like my internet bill. My internet bill, my cell phone bill, like anything that's not like a loan or another card or anything like that, I pay on there. And then I just pay Love the card world. to zero at the end of the month. And boom, I just made points on things that I would have normally just I that points on that. Wait, didn't they just kill off the points on the debit cards? I, they, I think oh, they, on the debit card, you have to have the Visa well, points while, credit actually. card. Yeah, it has been, probably been a while. I used to clean up on that. That's what that was a good point system because mm-hmm. yeah. I'd be like, oh, That's I got a, I got a twenty five dollar <laughs> like movie card for AMC or something, mm-hmm. yeah. right? You know, I mean that that was that was a good yeah. plan right there. There's there's a reason they moved it off. <laughs> yeah, it's why it's gone. It's just like the first PNC card I think I had was um they had NFC in it, so you can do the tap to pay. Mm-hmm. My, no, still card, no card since has had it for me. I don't mind having it. I, it, it new, I just got a new one. I don't think it does. No. That's because they want you to use Apple Pay. Because they want you to use Apple Pay or they want you to get the special platinum card or whatever or uh, they, they move hmm. it up a level. It's like just like cable. They move it up a level. They move my G4 up a tier and I'm not going to pay an extra thing. Dark days. Um, on that note, uh, guys, uh, go check everything out. We're at awesomecast.com. Um, we're on the tweeters. At awesome cast. Thanks, Mike Allen at Mike Allen PR for tweeting us all night uh, on the account and uh, doing the show notes as usual. He does a great job with that. He's been helping us with press releases and everything around here. Um, so go follow him on Twitter, uh, Mike Allen PR. Uh, you can also, like I said, subscribe to us on YouTube, on iTunes, on Spreaker, on Stitcher. I think this one's <laughs> Doctor Who and Buffy <laughs> Buffy Bars is the title. <laughs> um, you can also drop us a line at awesomecast at Sorgatron Media. Dot com and you can join us here live Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern at live.sorgatronmedia.com. You can see how they influence the show um, as we go here. Um, so uh, with that, uh, again, uh, Josh, tell people where they can find uh, everything you're involved with. Uh, workhardpgh.com and workhardpgh on Twitter is probably the best source. Awesome. And then, of course, at Chilla on the Twitters. That's where I'm at all and the time. And I'm at Sorgatron on Twitter as well. And everything, of course, all the great shows are at SorgatronMedia.com. You can also uh, drop in the Sorgatron Media Everything feed on iTunes and Stitcher and just get everything we're doing. We're doing a ridiculous number of stuff. Um, what did I say? Uh, we do uh, uh, like like eight podcasts on Tuesday alone. Wow. Um, yeah. It's yeah. crazy. And uh, we, we have every workday has at least one podcast at this point. Wow. Um, and four wrestling shows now five for us no yeah there are five wrestling shows now they just started a new one on thursdays because they are crazy on thursdays i'm not even involved in those ones <laughs> they just do them there's a pot, panel riot another great one that just started at panelriot.com great comic book uh one by uh, uh dj lunchbox will rutherford he's been on here a few times we should have him again uh hopefully we hear from him soon about how he's uh liking his iphone 6 so uh thanks again to the awesome chat room thanks josh for joining us Thank you. Um, and uh, next week, I believe we're scheduled to have Cindy Klosky back on, and maybe your Uncle Crappy as well. Um, thank you. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. <laughs>